Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Hsu. I'm going to talk about the Embedded Previews workflow, new in Lightroom Classic version 7. This is designed to allow you to start culling your photos as soon as they start showing up in the grid after you import them, and to allow you to move from photo to photo without encountering that loading message that you have to wait for. As you may know, Lightroom builds three JPEG copies of all of your images, just for its convenience. These are called previews. We have the thumbnail size, the standard size, which is the screen-sized one, and then the full-size one-to-one -one preview. When you encounter the loading message, you're waiting for Lightroom to build one of its previews. Now Lightroom Classic is able to build standard and one-to-one -one previews significantly faster than Lightroom 6 did. So even without the embedded preview workflow, you may find that as you move from photo to photo, you're not waiting for that message. In that case, you don't need the embedded previews workflow. The same is true if you don't mind waiting for Lightroom to build its own previews after import. Now your camera captures a JPEG for every image you shoot, even if you shoot in RAW. It's showing you that JPEG on the back of the camera. With the embedded previews workflow, Lightroom will fetch those JPEGs as it imports, and you'll use those rather than waiting for Lightroom to build its own. Now those JPEGs use all of your in-camera settings, saturation, contrast, whether you're converting to black and white, sharpening, etc. So they're going to look different than the raw files that Lightroom is going to render when it builds its own previews. But a lot of people aren't going to mind their images looking a little different as they cull them to be able to work more quickly. Let's take a look at how to do this. I'll click on Import, and I'll choose a folder of photos. You would set all of these settings as you normally would, but over in File Handling, choose Embedded and Sidecar. I'll get to the Sidecar portion of this a little bit later in the video. And I'll click on Import. Now, as soon as these start coming into the grid, I can get busy. I can start picking these and adding stars, etc. And as I move from photo to photo, you see that I don't have that loading message. Lightroom tells us that we're using the embedded preview so that we can keep in mind that the image may very well change in appearance once the raw file is rendered. Now just to note that our in-camera JPEGs have always looked different than our raw files. We're not usually aware of it, because we're not looking at the back of our camera at the same time that we're looking at the RAW file in Lightroom. Some of you, however, may have noticed in prior versions, right after import in the grid, the thumbnails change in appearance as Lightroom renders its own previews. But we're not giving up anything by using this workflow. We'll end up with the same RAW file appearance as we did before. If you find, though, that you really like the looks of the JPEGs better, consider using camera profiles in the camera calibration panel in the develop module. If we develop the file in any way, or even just go to the develop module, Lightroom will then build its own preview, so we don't see the embedded preview message. I'll go back to grid view. This badge here also indicates that we're looking at the embedded previews. To have Lightroom go ahead and render its own previews, you can click on the badge and either build that one or build them all. In my case, I don't think the images are going to change much. So Lightroom has built its own standard previews. You can also, in Preferences, I'll go to Lightroom on the Mac or Edit on the PC and into Preferences. On the General tab, you can choose to have Lightroom replace the embedded previews with its own standard previews when the program is idle. If, on the other hand, you want to finish your culling before that's done, you'll keep this unchecked and you'll manually update the previews. Now, for a lot of cameras, those embedded previews are full-size JPEG copies of your images. Therefore, let's assume that I'm still working with the embedded previews. When you zoom in, you'd still be looking at that embedded preview. However, some cameras embed smaller JPEGs. If they're less than 50% of the size of your RAW file, when you zoom in, Lightroom will go ahead and build its own one-to-one -one preview. If they're between 50% and 99% of the RAW file size, when you zoom in, you'll be zooming in on that smaller embedded preview. 
in that case, it may not be as sharp as your RAW file is, so it's not ideal. Alternatively, you can shoot RAW plus JPEG, and Lightroom will use the JPEG from each pair, so you'll have a full-size JPEG. That's why in the Import dialog, this says Embedded and Sidecar. It would use the Sidecar JPEG if there is one. Now Lightroom currently can't tell you how big those embedded previews are. To find out, you can use Jeffrey Friedel's Image Metadata Viewer. Navigate to this URL, click on Choose File, and select a RAW file from your camera. Click on Open, complete the reCAPTCHA here, and view the image data. You'll have to wait for your file to upload to Jeffrey's site. So I'll scroll down here. In my case, the preview is 3200 by 2400 whereas the RAW file is significantly bigger. So if during the culling process I plan to zoom in, it would be better for me to use RAW plus JPEG. Instead of shooting RAW plus JPEG, another option would be to copy your photos to Adobe's DNG format as you're importing, and then in Preferences, Lightroom on the Mac, Edit on the PC, on the File Handling tab, choose to have it embed a full-size JPEG. However, you can't throw these away later as you can the JPEG of RAW plus JPEG pairs, and the DNG conversion process takes time itself, so you'd have to test to find out which would be the fastest way for you. That's it for how to use this workflow. When I was taking a workshop this summer and I needed to go through my photos quickly after I imported them, I really enjoyed having this workflow to speed it up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to show your support and to hear about new video tutorials. While you're at it, subscribe to my newsletter to get a free training video download and more. I'm Laura Shue.